Hello and welcome to our painting video for the Leopard 2 main battle tank from the Leopard expansion for Team Yankee. I'm sure that you have already seen a few pictures of the models that I painted for the book. You will have noticed that they had their camouflage applied with an airbrush. In this video you will see that it is possible to achieve just as pleasing a result by brush painting the pattern on. I started by spraying the model's base colour of NATO green. At the same time I carefully sprayed the track's battlefield brown. This can be done by brush as well, it just takes a little longer. With the base colour laid down, I start on the camouflage pattern. For this I have mixed black and worn rubber in about a 50-50 ratio, as I wanted a more factory fresh look than could be achieved by using worn rubber alone. Here you'll see that I initially paint the outline for the camouflage, then I fill it in. This helps me keep the pattern tidy. After painting the first colour in the pattern, I move on to using Motherland Earth to complete the camouflage. I use the same technique of painting the outline and then filling the colour in to keep the pattern tidy. Once the camouflage pattern has been applied, I paint the road wheels, track pads and smoke grenade launcher covers with worn rubber. To save time, I don't paint the track pads that won't be seen once the model is on the table. To finish off the tracks, I give them a generous coat of Manstein shade. Because the NATO 3 colour pattern is quite dark, I find giving the whole model an edge highlight by dry brushing on dry dust helps to define the large amount of surface detail on these models. After completing the edge highlight, I paint the MG3's ammunition box and mount with Sherman Drab. I use this to paint the flexible sleeve behind the gun mantlet as well. Then I move on to painting spare track links and tool handles with Battlefield Brown. Often on real vehicles, these types of items are left on the vehicle when it is painted camouflage, making them the same colour as the piece of tank under them. But on these models, painting them different colours helps to make the model seem more lifelike. I then paint the MG3 and the metal parts of the tools with dark gun metal. Next I prepare the parts of the model that will have decals by applying some gloss varnish. While I wait for the gloss to dry, I attach the tracks. Then I apply the decals using my fingers and a sculpting tool to wrestle them into their final position. Once they have had a little time to settle, I brush some decal softening solution over them to help the decals conform to the surface of the model. Off camera I have given the entire model a coat of gloss varnish in order to protect the paint and prepare it for a shading wash. Once the gloss is completely dry I give the model a targeted wash by dipping a small brush in some Manstein shade, then touching it to panel lines and other details that I think will look better if they are more defined. Because the surface is glossy, capillary action will help to move the wash along lines and details. It also gives you a short window of time to wipe off any excess. Finally, I use a matte varnish to remove the gloss. Thank you for watching.